Hi there. When you last saw me, I was having power problems with the ESP8266 and I was trying to run it off of USB power and finding out that there's certainly not going to be enough power going through the little regulator I've got on this board. So I decided to try and see if I could power it from an Arduino Uno. Now I've got a cupboard full of things like that over here, so I'll go and find one of the robot cupboard. I've got an Arduino Uno with a couple of cables here going across the 3.3 volt line and the ground line and also a USB cable for my Uno. Now one thing I am going to do is just have a quick look at the Arduino specs. There will be a bill of materials for the parts on here which will include whatever the 3.3 volt regulator is on it. So if we go and find the Uno bill of materials then we'll be able to tell if that's going to cope with this or if it's at least going to be enough for me to get some data out of it. We have a schematic we just want to find where the 3.3 volt regulator is. Ultra low power LDO regulator, 3.3, this will be it. That's saying 50 milliamp, that might be just what this thing pulls, not what it'll output. Full load of 150 milliamps, so it's actually not going to be too much better than what I have. However, I have seen some demonstrations online of people getting this working with it. So it may be that the regulator here can actually handle a lower voltage drop, and it is an LDO, than this regulator here, even if the current is quite close. So I say we give it a go, and I will be ordering a proper part for this so I can use it with the batteries later. So let's see if we get anything at all from the ESP8266, anything other than the uh, scrolling message of doom, when powering it from the UNO. Let's take the 3.3 volt line, the ground line, and let's temporarily unplug the serial FTDI chip completely. But instead of powering it that way, I'll leave the common ground in. If I'm actually powering it from the same USB device, it will already have common ground. Take away that pin there, connecting the regulator down. So the regulator now won't be actually connected to anything but ground. We'll pop the Arduino in the bottom line here. Unconventionally, on this board, I've chosen to be the three volt power. And the top line there I've chosen to be the ground and we'll plug the Arduino in with this USB cable here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the, Ar uh, the Arduino are doing in terms of code, uh, we are just using the regulator on it. Slight abuse of an Arduino, uh, I have enough of them and this is only a temporary measure because I just want to get this to do something. Plug it in and we'll plug that in over here and let's see if we're getting anything on. P8266. Right, we have a light across the 8266. No blue lights. This is a bad sign. From what I'm understanding from reading around, flashing blue light is what I want to see. So let's see if we are getting anything from the SP8266. Ah, garbage characters. That's not good. Okay. First thing to do when you see garbage characters on a serial terminal is try another board rate. Now, if you remember originally, I had a board rate of 9600 and had to up it to 115200. Let's see what happens if I switch it back to 9600. This is just a bit of a hunch here. Serial. Okay, we're now at 9600. Start again. Hello. We now have the module communicating with me. Let's type AT. And it's gone to the front of the line. Okay, let's try doing, I think it's a control J. Aha! Control J on the keyboard is carriage return. Clearly putty here is not sending both. For now I'll live with the control J, otherwise I'll spend an age messing with the settings. We now have this communicating with me might be worth finding out some of the commands we can do with it. I've started a session with AT plus RST, which is a reset command. So you see it respond with an OK, then actually reset, and you can see here it's running at a different board rate. This will be 115200, where we saw our exceptions. So the bootloader and the firmware are running at different rates, which means we probably can replace the firmware. OK, so let's see some other commands we can do here. The first thing I'll try is AT plus GMR. Oops, that's not going to work. So deleting here will not work because I've not got line editing turned on. So let's type what I meant. 
and there we are and that's actually supposed to be the firmware version we can then do at plus cw mode to ask where we are and it says no this is fun <laughs> Uh, but we can say 80 plus CW mode equals 3, which according to this tutorial gets us to a point where we're able actually to do networking things. Okay, so we do 80 plus CWLAP, which lists the access point. Wait a second. We now have a list of all the local access points. <coughs> now I'm in a flat block, so there are going to be lots and lots of networks here. One of these is mine. I'll show you in a second what we can do once we're on it. And I'm expecting to be able to set up some kind of networking between my laptop here and this, which is actually the serial port connected to it. Now, I've already connected it previously to my local network. So if I do AT plus CIFSR, which is showing the IPs, we've got two IP addresses. So these are the network addresses. I'm not sure what dot 4.1 is, but 0 0.10 will be on my local network. So let's see if we can actually set this up to start listening as a server. There is a command at plus cip server equals 1 to enable, and we'll say port 9999. Unimaginative, but it'll do. We have a problem. Let's try and do cip mux equals one which allows for multiple connections we're going to want an incoming and outgoing excuse me i might have had some garbage on my buffer already there we go okay so we should now be able to start a server so then we do at cip server equals one for on and 9999 for that port Okay, which has got an IP of 010 in my local network. So we go to this putty and we'll restart the session, which I've already set up to 010 on port 999. And you can see it incoming. Now there's a bunch of blurb here. I think there's maybe just some setup stuff. But now if I type test here, hit enter, we now have some data coming over. So let's see if we can send something back. AT plus CIP send equals zero because that's coming on port zero. We'll say six and we'll get a little prompt here. We'll go, hello, and there we are. Right, and what we might also want to do over here is do an AT plus CIP send equals zero one. Just send that line feed there. So that's interesting. Maybe if we can send both in one message. AT, oops, that's not going to work. Uh, here's the thing, you can't line edit in this. So I might have to make a, a, a bit of code to sit over the top of it for that. But eventually it's going to be code call, talking to code when we're talking about robots. So equals zero seven for hello, control J and enter. So we can now send data in two directions there is a lot of boilerplate here which means if i was actually doing something with a robot or with an arduino at the other end i'd need to strip this off but as i said from the outset i don't actually intend to link this to an arduino i intend to get the gpios on this device running by themselves now we've got it to communicate with things we'll see if we can get it to do things with its io pins and maybe see if we can program it however the first thing is let's replace that arduino uno with a slightly more permanent power solution. I've got just the thing in mind. 